Hey, 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 Sharon Cornell from here. Touch and go wash your hands. Touch and go. Is it touch and go for your business right now? And I was going to go one direction with this today, and I changed my mind as I was starting the video because it really is touch and go. We are in an incredibly uncertain, risky, and critical time for many of our businesses. Now, just like any downturn or any change, any massive change in our environment causes some businesses to rise and really increase and become super duper successful and other businesses to either change and figure out how they're going to operate in the new environment or they become obsolete. Think, I mean, the big example people use is um, whips and riding crops and things. Whips kind of went out of style when horse and buggies went out of style, right? You didn't need really whips anymore. How many how many wagons are being made and manufactured that and that was the main mode of transportation back in the day. So our expression today, our idiom is touch and go. And touch and go it became popular in the 1800s. It was used a lot. And there's two possible meanings and there's it's even more nowadays where it could be used or where it could have come from. But where it originated, they think it either originated with ships. Sometimes a ship would be traveling along and the water would get shallow and it would touch the bottom. And when that happened, it could go one of two ways. This ship could get stuck and run aground or whatever, run ashore, whatever it's called, or it could have escaped that situation and continue about its journey. So they called that when it touched the bottom and it continued a touch and go. Um, also, back when wagons were popular and people traveled by wagon or moved products and services by wagon, um, sometimes two wagons would meet in a, in a path or a road and their wheels would actually touch and they called that a touch and go because it could go one of either one of either two ways, right? It could end horribly in a, in a wagon crash or they could just have missed the accident and continue about their way, right? Well, many of us are facing a touch and go situation in our businesses right now, right today. I actually did a little excursion yesterday. I hadn't been out of the house and I was, I mean, I've been in the yard and stuff, but I hadn't been out for a nice long walk and, and journeyed out and ventured out for about a week now. And I was going a little stir crazy. So I thought, you know, I'm going to get up early and I'm going to go for a nice long walk. I'm going to go, there's a place called the Dyke downtown where I live that is a half a bridge across the St. Croix River. And I used to walk there every single day when I had my business downtown. So I thought, I'm just gonna walk down there. I don't think there's gonna be very many people and it's good to get fresh air. So I'm gonna go get some fresh air and I'm gonna check it out. And then I decided after I'd gone out to the dike, it was a little chilly, but it was so gorgeous. And the, the ice on the river is cracking. So it sounds, it makes the coolest sound. I was trying to record it, but I couldn't record it. But it makes this cool cracking thunder-like sound. And it's really, really fascinating. So I, I was glad I didn't miss that. But the, after that, I thought, well, I'm gonna walk up and down the streets. I'm gonna see number one, what restaurants are still doing takeout? Because, you know, like everybody else, I didn't have a stockpile of food. And so I wanted to find out, okay, who's open, who's not. And then I started doing a little exercise of looking at all the different businesses just on Main Street and seeing how they communicated with their customers. And why is this important? Because how we treat our customers when things happen in our environment is critical. There are businesses that had, you know, really nice signs on their door, letting people know, hey, we're closed for two weeks for the coronavirus, and then, you know, we'll be open or we'll let you know what's gonna happen next. There are, you know, deliveries in the back, um, deliveries only, um, call, you know, call in orders only, curbside delivery, and, and signs and things. And I took some pictures of them, because I think I'm gonna write an article about it, because it's really interesting how different businesses are dealing with this situation. Now, those are the businesses that are fortunate enough to be able to remain open, right? Are, are letting people know how they can um, continue to, to do business with them. And then there's businesses that are in the same line of work that could be open, that there's just nothing. There is no sign, no notice, no we're closed, nothing. And then there are businesses that have to be closed, but that have communication on their on their front door or that don't. Now, does this, is this a big thing? Is this a whether your business will succeed or not overall um, indicator? No, of course not. But it is an indicator of how each individual business feels about and treats their customers. Those that ha have had no communication, done nothing, 
are, are sending a message to their customers. We're sending a message that, hey, you're not, you know, my business is more important than, and I guess my livelihood is more important than yours. And maybe they're not meaning to send the message, but that's the message that's being sent. Is that what you want to communicate to your customers? I, I mean, a, a minimal effort to put a sign on your door to let people know what's going on with your business. And even there were some that said, hey, we don't know what's going on. We don't know how long we're going to be closed, but we're closed right now by, you know, the governor said we have to shut down. We're shut down, you know, and some of them even said, hey, if we can do anything to help, give us a call and we'll see what we can do. Now, I'm having a nail emergency. Like that's the biggest problem on the planet. No, but my daughter and I had to go to Target yesterday and find a kit so I can temporarily patch and do my nails so that they don't break off and so I can actually trim them because they're getting too long. Big deal, right? First world problems. But my point is the businesses that treat the, your people, that treat your people or continue to serve your people or find creative ways to continue to serve your people. Maybe you're closed down, but you could allow people to do phone orders and they could come and pick up or you could even send their order to them. Guess what? UPS is busier than ever. You know, FedEx is busier than ever and the mail service is out busier than ever. I thanked our mail lady yesterday for continuing to deliver the mail because I saw her on my walk. Um, and I will say it's awesome that drive through businesses are still open, drive through food places and restaurants are open, drug stores are still open. I think I saw that Dollar, when I went out with my daughter, I think there's a lot more businesses open in my town than I thought that there would be. Um, and so I, I was actually, um, relieved and happy to see that. So anyway, touch and go. Touch and go, <laughs> the expression, what does that mean to you and your business? What are you gonna do in this uncertain time? You know, we have the opportunity, and it doesn't always feel like an opportunity, but it's a really big opportunity to, if our business is shut down, hone our skills, find more ways and better ways that we can move forward serving the people that we want to serve, that we love to serve. If you've got a salon right now, and you're shut down, ask yourself, a nail salon, I'll use nail salons, how can I better serve my customers so that something like this would never happen again? Um, salons should be places that are so clean and so sanitary that we could still serve people, right? But since it's a health thing and they're, they're not necessarily set up that way, and I think nail salons in select in particular, because of my own personal experience with them, they're gonna have to change the way they do business. All of us going forward, hopefully are changing the way that we're thinking about doing business. And what better time than right now when we're shut down forcibly, never never before in history am I aware of that we've been shut down forcibly and had to go home and think about stuff, right? Or we could go home and plan and figure stuff out or you know, go online and take some courses. If you don't have a, a website, if you don't have an online presence, now is the perfect time to be creating an online presence. If you don't know how to do that, ask, right? because I won't do it for you, but I can sure tell you and show you exactly how and where you can quickly do that. Whatever it is that you need to do to survive this and going forward, any other uncertainty, any other touch and go situation that could arise in your life or in your business. Think of some touch and go situations. We've all been in them before, right? You know, I slip on the stairs about once a week and that could end horribly or can just be fine. I go about my merry way, right? And so far I've been going about my merry way and I've only slipped down a couple of stairs and I haven't hurt myself, but that's a touch and go situation. It's uncertain, right? And it, those things happen to us every day, but this is like a giant wake up call to pay attention to our lives, pay attention to the direction of our lives and where we're taking our businesses. Are we making the world a better place with what we're doing? Are we being kind? Are we helping our fellow human beings? Are we communicating with them and letting them know that we appreciate and value them and we thank them for our ability to exist and be in business because if we're not adding value, then we're not gonna be in business, right? Now and going forward, that's just the nature of business. So life is always uncertain, embrace that. Do what you can do, you know, be the best human being you can be, be the best human, business owner that you can be and continually find ways to serve and add value to your people. And, you know, I can't think of any business right now that's shut down that can't still continue to sell and be in business if they get creative and, and do some things that they are totally capable of doing already. Um, again, if you're stuck and if you're freaking out about that, ask me, hit me up in the comments below and we can have a quick conversation about that. And I guarantee we can find ways for you to continue to serve people and make money to provide for yourself and your family 
during and throughout and after this this challenge, this touch and go situation. And this too shall pass as long as we touch things and we go wash our hands. And we take care of ourselves and take care of each other. That's it. Have an amazing day. I will see you tomorrow with another interesting idiom, what it means, where it comes from, and how you can apply it to your life and your business right now. Take care.